Hey everyone, so I'm launching a series of SQL interview questions that I'm going to post to my channel, starting with this one. And I'm going to dive into what kind of questions you might be asked in a data analyst, data engineering, or a data scientist interview. I'm going to walk through my approach to the question, how I would answer it. Uh, and this might also be good if you're a hiring manager and you're not sure where to start with formulating a SQL question to quiz your candidates on. So I've got a lot of these planned for the future. I'm going to start with the very first SQL interview question I was ever asked, and this was for a senior data analyst position. So uh, I hope you enjoy. There's going to be much more on the way. Suppose that you have a table of different foods sold at a grocery store, and it shows you how much money each food generated individually each month. Ignore the fact that this says January 1st or February 1st. That's just a placeholder for the entire month. So we would read this first row as sushi generated a revenue of $50 for the month of January in 2022. The next row shows sushi generated a revenue of $100 in February 2022. Pizza generated $70 in March 2022 and so on. Try to get from that table to a reduced table that only shows each food and their most profitable month with the amount that they generated for that highest earning month. For example, sushi's best month was February, where it generated $100. Pasta's best month was May, where it generated $90. All right, so here we have our table. Um, I've already built the table. Uh, like I said, you can go to GitHub and get the code necessary to generate your own table so you can follow along with this. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just examining what we have here. Now, because we're just looking for the top revenue produced in a given month and the date where it performed the best, we need to reduce the number of rows. To do that, there are a few ways I can think of. You could either use a WHERE clause you could use a group by statement, or you could do some kind of inner join. Now, at first glance, I'm thinking maybe a group by statement would be best for this to, to start with. So let's do that. Let's see what happens when we just kind of tinker with a group by statement. So group by uh, food, we'll just start there. So we'll group by the food, we'll select uh, maybe the max revenue and let's just see how that looks. Okay, so we run that and you can see that you start to get um, you start to get those values that we're looking for, the maximum revenue possible for all the data that we have on hand right now. Now you might have been tempted to include the max date as well when approaching this question, but keep in mind that when you pull the max date, that's going to give you the, the latest date available from that data. It's not necessarily going to match up with this uh, revenue over here. Let me name those. So as max revenue, revenue as max date. All right, so um, we know that pasta is that the top revenue for that is $90, but that data actually came from May and not July. So this gives us a mismatch. It doesn't really, it isn't really truthful in the answer that it's providing. So we do not want to include max date here because that would give us a misleading answer. Okay, so we know that for our first step, we can group by food and then retrieve the maximum revenue uh, out of all the months of data that we have on hand. And that's about all we can do for that first step. Okay, so it looks like this. So next we need to figure out, okay, well, how can we use that information to reduce the number of rows in our original data set? Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna set up a multi-part common table expression. I'm gonna have two or three common table expressions where we can create or uh, these containers of data that we can refer back to in a series of steps. Okay, so if you haven't used a common table expression before, I'd highly recommend that you uh, review that. Um, I'll have a video posted to that so you can learn more about common table expressions, but you can think of it like a container. Okay, 
So I'll call my first common table expression main. So with main as, and we're just gonna select everything from that uh, table that I created, that SQL interval question one. Select star from that, okay. Add our comma here. And then I'm going to add a, another common table expression. I'll call that um, uh, grouping. I'll just call it grouping. Grouping as star from grouping. See how that's coming along. We don't need this comma here. Run that. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, so next, we need to take this and interjoin it to the main query. And that's going to reduce the number of rows in this one based off of the inner join that we do. I'll, I'll show you how to set up that inner join. So we're going to start with this main uh, common table expression. Select star from main. And we're going to need the food, the food ID. And actually, I'm pulling in food when I should be pulling in food ID. So let me change that up. I want to use the primary key for this. So food ID, we're going to be using the food ID, date, revenue, from main. We're going to do an inner join on that grouping. Okay, so as, group, as T2, grouping is T2, main is T1. T1 equals T2. I'm going to do this on the food ID. And then I'm going to add the on here. On, okay, on T1 food ID equals T2 food ID. And then the thing that's going to wrap this all up is we're going to do this, we're going to do the second part of this join on the actual values. Okay, and I'll show you visually like how that all works in a second here. So t1.revenue equals t2.max revenue. Let's see if that works. There might be an error or two here that we have to sort out first. So food ID is ambiguous. I'm gonna give that an alias here. All right, let's try that again. There we go. All right, so We've got all of our food IDs, and let me pull in actually the food name so that it's easier, like the food ID is kind of meaningless on its own. All right, what's, oh, not food name, but just food rather. Okay, so there we go. So we have now gone from that granular detail of all those foods and all the months and all the revenue that it generated and we reduce that down to the each food and its strongest performing month and the value associated with that month. So wrapping this all up, I'll explain what happened visually here. In the first common table expression, we referenced our main table. In the second common table expression, we grouped on the food items and retrieved the maximum value regardless of the month that it belonged to. This set the stage for us to perform an inner join. Now, an inner join works like a Venn diagram, and this will return a table that only has something in common between the two tables that are being joined together. So we specified that this inner join returns only the results from the first table where it matches both the food identification number and the maximum revenue from the second table for each row, giving us our answer. All right, so I just noticed after going through my code that there's actually a step that I didn't even need to take that I could have trimmed out to save myself time when writing up my solution. So I will leave it up to you to see if you can find that uh, extra step that I took and see if you can write it better and more efficient. There's also a completely different approach that you could take the, to this question that doesn't even involve a group by statement. Um, so I would encourage you to just dive into this question as much as you can. Leave some comments down below if you think you have a better solution or a more efficient solution or just thought of something totally different. I would encourage you all to share your code with each other. 
hit that like and subscribe button. I'm going to have more content like this in the future, and I'll see you in another video.